The program usually presented at this time will not be seen today so that we may bring you the following special program. They took off 30 minutes ago, a 747 airplane, and clamped onto its back America's first space shuttle, the Enterprise. They lifted off from a strip in the Mojave Desert, climbing into the morning air to make a bit of history today. At this moment, from a live camera in a chase plane, here they are, about 23,000 feet now. In a few minutes, the plane will release the spacecraft, and with its two astronauts on board, the Enterprise will get its first free flight test. We'll see it all. NBC News Enterprise reports the, the flight of the, of the Enterprise. And the wind's now this the special NBC News report is brought to you by Polaroids SX-70, the finest instant camera in the world. Good morning. Eight years ago, when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon, the restless American spirit began asking the question, what next? Well, this morning, we start to get the answer. Having, quote, conquered space, albeit minimally, the next thing to do is to begin to use it. And that's what the space shuttle program is for, and that is its promise. Well, at this moment, here we are. The space shuttle on board its 747, clamped on top like a remora to a shark, about 23,000 feet, and it is about 13 minutes now from separation. Now, again, in this first test, the space shuttle will not be going into space. It won't do that for about a year and a half. But today, it will be released. It will glide, powerless but controlled, maneuvered by astronauts Fred Hayes and Gordon Fullerton to a landing about five minutes later. It is its first free flight test, a very important test, space officials say. They say that years from now, we will look back on what happens in this half hour as one more milestone of the space age. Well, if that's the case, we figured that it will not have any more meaning for anyone than for the youth of this country. And so instead of filling our studio this morning with NASA officials or former astronauts, we've invited a small group of high school science students to join us to watch this and hear it. Good morning, folks. How are you? We're going to go right now and join Roy Neal, NBC News correspondent who has covered everything in aerospace for America since our aerospace program began. He's at Edwards now, and good morning, Roy. Good morning, Jack. It's beautiful, warm, clear morning here at Edwards. And here on the ground, there's a huge crowd that's assembled because of this important flight. I must tell you, though, here at ground level, we don't see very much. I'm looking up there right now, and way off in the distance, I can see some small objects that are, of course, the 747 with the Enterprise on top and a number of chase planes. But uh, the better way to watch it is right here on television, as all of us have been doing this morning. One point I would like to make, though, that is that the piggyback concept, this carrying of the Enterprise aboard a 747, is not a new concept. Back in the days of World War I, the British experimented with a small scout fighter atop a seaplane. And in 1938, a British flying boat carried a smaller seaplane on a pylon, and they separated for successful flights. During World War II, the Germans loaded unmanned fighter planes with high explosives and mounted them atop Messerschmitt bombers and separated over the target. Now, it's a 747 jet carrying a space machine. <clears throat> this same plane will be used to ferry shuttles from California to a launch site at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. From there, beginning in 1979, the shuttles will be launched by rockets to fly orbital trials. They will ride attached to a huge tank of fuel for the main engines, and two more solid rockets will be strapped on the sides. In flight, the strap-ons will be dropped at an altitude of about 30 miles and returned by parachute for recovery. The main engines will complete the job of putting the shuttle into orbit. Then the fuel tank will be left behind, leaving the shuttle free to go about its business. Shuttles will remain in space for up to a month. They're designed to place satellites in orbit, repair existing satellites, even carry scientists, men and women, in a space laboratory. Perhaps most exciting, Space Shuttle makes possible the building of orbiting space stations, 
Space planners envision solar power stations beaming electricity back to Earth, and factories turning out products that can be manufactured more efficiently in space than on Earth. Present plans call for five of these machines, each capable of flying at least a hundred missions. After each flight, the orbiter will be refurbished and ready to fly again within two weeks after landing. NASA envisioned 60 flights a year in the 1980s and is now offering special discounts, charters, and standby fares for passengers and cargo. To get back from space, the shuttle will burn its engines to slow down. It will return through the atmosphere, heat shield forward, much like the old Apollo spacecraft, heat up to 2,700 degrees from friction with the air as it slows down. And finally, the shuttle will nose down to fly like an airplane coming in for a landing. The first five orbital flights will be launched from Florida, and they will land here at the same dry lake bed in California, where we hope to see the Enterprise touch down in just a few minutes. Minus five minutes. Face, Roy. Say again, Jack. Right to you. You've got it. Oh, fine. Right. I've been busy listening to the flight. Everything's going very well. And let me give you some idea of what is about to happen here in just a few moments. Uh, as the 747 gets ready for the separation maneuver, it will go into a very shallow dive. And you may notice that the Enterprise in this model is sitting at a slight incline, about six degrees to be exact. That's planned. And at the time of separation, explosive bolts will be fired. Matter of fact, Fred Hayes will push a button, activating them. Those bolts will be fired, lifting the shuttle. The shuttle will then pitch up, and it will thereby be able to clear the tail of the 747, something about which many people seem to have been more worried than the astronauts because they've checked this out and worked it very carefully. Now, let's tune in. Let's see what's happening up there in the air, orbiting Edwards Air Force Base. Let's listen to the astronauts themselves and the 747 pilots. They're not saying anything, of course, at the moment. As soon as they do, I'll fly Houston down. control, which show an altitude of 27,000 feet now. At uh, 2 minutes, 41 seconds from pushover. Pushover clock will be updated at 1 minute. That's Jack Riley in Mission Control, Houston, advising us the pushover, which is the maneuver. Shelter aircraft pilot, uh, Fitzbolt will call uh, launch ready after pushover after he's achieved the uh, proper airspeed. The pushover. Probably the next call you will hear will be a Chase 1 calling uh, SEP. Chase 2 will call clear. The pushover to which Riley refers is the diving maneuver for the 747. Beautiful pictures from one of the chase there planes. There is no countdown clock to separation. Five for pushover minus two. Mark, pushover minus two. That's minus two minutes to the pushover. No five. And the person calling that. Separation is the option of Fred Hayes after the launch ready call. We're hearing Houston Mission Control in direct communication with the astronauts and with the pilots of the 747. And uh, Mr. Riley is in Mission Control in Houston, much like the flights that flew in space. That, of course, is preconceived because Houston Mission Control will be doing all the controlling for the later orbital flights of the shuttle. And so they're breaking in the flight crews now. And in this picture, you can see very clearly chase plane activity off to the side. Those chase planes are observing the 747 and the shuttle. Stand by for pushover minus one. Mark, pushover minus one. You can set your watch by it. We're one minute away from the pushover, which will be the diving maneuver of the 747. And once they've achieved the right speed and the right altitude, then Fred Hayes will push the button. 905 and Enterprise Houston is go for pushover. 905. 905 is the 747, by the way. That's its code name. Up to launch, Eddie. Um, Roger. Launch ready. That was Fred Hayes advising that he's ready aboard the Enterprise. The okay, Enterprise is uh, set. Thanks for the left, Ed. You bet. 
Ah. We're about 10 seconds away from the diving maneuver. 905, we're coming up on four seconds to push over. Two, one, push over. Houston copies, push over. Such a shallow dive, you can barely see the 747 start to nose down, but it has. Accelerating now, have airspeed 205. He's reading those speeds in knots, by the way. Altitude 27. 27,000 feet. Airspeed 230 knots. Okay, we are. Two lights, uh, Houston is go for Seth, have a great flight. They're cleared to separate. Power. Launch ready. Take one step. There they go. They have separation. There's two clear. Okay, we got a GPC light. Lost the sink on two. Pushing over. Got a big X on computer number two. Roger, stand by and halt on GPC number two. Go for mode 203. Roger. They're flying by computer. Okay, flying good. And you can hear them Roger. talking about the computer readouts now. B-50, start and flare. Putting on his flaps just like an airplane. He's conducting a practice landing at altitude. This gives him the uh, feel and attitude and same airspeed as when he touched down. Twenty thousand two fifty-five. Twenty thousand two thirty. Yeah, that sideways lurch is really there. It's not looking great there, but okay, he's been working figured for the uh, get some outside. Roger, we copy. Okay, for two oh five at twenty thousand one hundred. Okay, 11 Alpha, pushing over. Okay, I got you 195 and 20,000. Okay, I'm running about five or 10 low on the backup and the prime boat. Okay. We're pulling contrails right now, Fred. Enterprise Houston, we show perhaps a slightly low L over D. They are still several minutes away from actual touchdown. We can gauge it as they read out their altitude. Enterprise, you're clear to start the turn. Okay, Gordo's in the turn. It's really tight, uh, Bo. In fact, I think it's a little uh, better than the old uh, TA field. Great. Okay, Gordo, on the turn, 16,250. Fullerton's flying now. Okay. Fullerton in the right seat. I'm about 14 lower than you are in speed and right on altitude. Okay. The final. Start to turn to final. Hey, how's the energy look, Houston? I'm sure I'm maybe a little high. We recommend 30% speed brakes. Okay, board's coming open to 30. Speed brakes are coming open. Enterprise, we now recommend 50% speed brakes. 10,285. Speed brakes looking good, Fredo. Eight are open about 45 now. Houston, copies. They should be about one minute from Eight touchdown. miles out. Energy potential Enterprise, good. Enterprise, we show eight miles out, nine potential. We'll leave you here. Okay. 7,290. Okay, I'm showing about uh, 280. Okay, why don't you use yours until we get a little more? This whole gliding flight should take about five minutes from start to finish. We'll see how closely they match. 5,295. Okay, I'm still earned about seven low. But. Cabin's increasing. 
A little hot. That's pilot talk for a little fast. 2,300. Fido says it looks super. Mark coming in. Speed flare. Speed brake's coming in now. Over the numbers in the runway. And we are armed and flare. Nearing the runway now. 200 feet, 290. Okay, the gear Here's is coming, coming down. down at 270. They're coming. Doors open and they're all down. Coming down. Look down here. 50 feet. 40 feet. 30. 20. 15. 10. Holding 10. 220 about 5 feet. 4 feet. Give them some dust. 4 feet. 3 feet. 2 feet. Just over half about 2 feet. You're on. You're on. Okay, your nose wheel's about 10 feet. About five. Four feet. About five feet. Four, three, two, one. We'll see you, bit. Yeah, it's great. Hey, and good. Touchdown at 54 minutes, 5 seconds past the hour. Uh, that was a beautiful flight, and obviously they came down well, they landed safely, and now they've stopped. A very successful first flight for the Space Shuttle Enterprise. Jack? But just as they were landing, it was too good a glider. Roy, that was quite a flight. Okay, now I'm going to have to be flying blind. Two seven. See, I don't have airfix that are all that good. Roger, congratulations. It was a beautiful flight. Okay, Roy Neal out at Edwards Air Force Base, and uh, that is the flight that space people believe, ladies and gentlemen, is the opening door of your future. What would you think of it? Anyone have any comments? That was really about a minute left. Pardon? That was really spectacular. That, yeah. I can't believe that that was just gliding, and it actually did, came in without any power at all. It's a heck of a glider, as, as the astronaut said, a very good glider, albeit a 75-ton glider. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the mass, the mass of that, and the wings aren't really that that big. It's compared to how how large and heavy it is. It had a grace to it that one would not have expected. Karen, you were out at Edwards uh, 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 for the last test flight uh, before they released it. How did this compare? Well, I mean, they didn't separate last time, yeah. but you were, it was almost like you expected it to come. Was there away. any was there any emotion in watching this uh, for for any of you? I wonder. No. Where's that? Yeah, it was really good. I was really pulling for it. It was <laughs> unbelievable. I didn't think I was going to. Excite the excitement. Of it. Yeah, I expected it to be kind of clumsy. You know, mm. but it just eased right on off and no, eased right on down. Really well, we're glad you were here with us to watch it with us. We appreciate that and uh, hope you had fun. And welcome to your future. This is, they tell us, the first crossing of a threshold into a new kind of space age. Up till now, every manned probe has been just to explore mysteries. Now we're beginning to use space, which I guess means that today we're a little closer to Wookiees than we were yesterday. Good morning. Houston, we would like you to shut down APUs number one and number three. Hey, Gardo just made the input. That's a low test. He'll do that. What side the blue plum on? Summer. Convoy Commander Houston, would you please verify that the plume was on the left side? Verified. Thank you. And you, you, your plume is out. Understand the plume is now out. Roger. Okay, and convoy have all APUs shut down. All tanks out closed now. Roger, copy. This is the NBC Television Network.